All right, this is what I'm going to do for the Mosin I got. I just covered up the two targets. It's a 1938. It's got the, the big peep sight in the back and the little peep sight in the front. And you put the little front one in the back one. And my eyes can actually focus on those. And I can shoot a lot better. The old V-notch, I couldn't see anymore. My AK-47s, I could barely shoot them out past 25, 30 yards because I can't see them V-notch. So I put red dots on those. Uh, ARs are fine. You got that for iron sights. You got the... You know, you got that peep sight. You get that round thing. It's I could see the front post, and as long as I can get that thing, just like shooting my bow, my peep sight, it's fine. It's the V notch with that tiny little thing, and then trying to get that front post, and I just can't see anymore, even with my glasses. And then I'm, these are bifocals, no line bifocals. So then I'm tilting my head up, and I'm trying to hit my head in different directions, and I think that uh, screws up my accuracy. So, out of all the Mosins I got, I got the one that I modified and got the synthetic stock on a forward eye relief. Yeah, it shoots all right. But uh, the other ones, I, I, I enjoy shooting them still. It's just I can't really see unless I'm doing 25, 30 yards. Uh, and then they're, you know, they're, they do they do all right. But uh, I'll show you this peep sight real quick. Yeah, throw these in the trash real quick. All right, so this is the 1938 Mosin Nagant. And this is the peep sight. You see that? It's a peep, and then that's a peep. Uh, let's see if you can see the hole through there. Let me just put it down here for a second. All right, there's the peep sight, and there's the peep sight. So yeah, you line up that front peep with the back peep, and it's much easier for my 52-year-old eyes, you know? Let me put this one over here. shooting wrench bench. Uh, so yeah I could still hit you know it's the man size targets out at 100 yards 120 yards uh, but just couldn't see anymore but these I'm hitting way more consistent better groups they're still I'm not it's not attack driver it's not a scoped rifle so it's not a attack driver but it's pretty good for an 84 year old rifle Let's see, 84, yeah, <laughs> 22, 38, yeah, 84 year old rifle. It's not bad, and I tell you, the lands and grooves in the in the in the bore are just thick, man, and sharp, just nice. So even when I got it, whoever had it took care, really good care of it. It was coated in Cosmoline, so maybe it was just in a Russian storage or whoever storage, but uh, it made it through my house fire. Um, it's got this little leather thing on for ammo. Of course, it's got the original thing with the ammo pouches. I don't use them. Uh, I can use stripper clips on this one. The modified one I can't because of uh, where the scope is. But, uh, all right. So, I got that big black target out there. Got this ready to go. Let's see what I can do with a 30 or 84 year old rifle. That brown's sticking all over me. All right. And these are. I just said that Barnall. It's the first time shooting these through this gun. I've shot Barnall for through all my other guns that they make calibers for, and they're fine. They're fine. And I opened up this though, and it had that green metallic. I'm like, oh man, that's gonna be corrosive because it looks just like some corrosive stuff I have. But it's not. It says non-corrosive. Although they are heavy. These are 185 grain. Normally, I think the Tulas are 147. So these are heavier, but they're all right. Um, I'm still hitting the target. I'm not going way down into the dark, so the 40 grains aren't making much of a difference at 100 yards, so let's see what happens here. All right, line her up. And I can't see that thing. I can't tell. That's weird.
Oh, I think I see him now. I should have brought my uh, telescope here, or my spotting scope. I think these are both on the middle target on the right-hand side. That's what it looks like they are. I gotta put that in there better. It's chewing me up. No protection on this puppy. It's straight shoulder. <laughs> Gonna leave a mark. It doesn't hurt. It's not a killer thing. It's just uncomfortable with that metal digging in there. Got a whole bunch of shoulder surgery, so it digs in there. It doesn't hurt. It's not hurting me, but just it just digs that metal. Should put some rubber rubber butt pad on there. All right. Go check these out, and I think I'm done shooting for the day. That's the uh, the modified Mosin with the. Muzzle brake, and it's got the forward eye relief scope. It hits. It's it, it'll hit that target. It it shoots to the to the right. It shoots to the right, and I can't get the scope to go any further to the left. I'll have to make some adjustments. Maybe I'll have to shiv it over or something. Can't make too many things. This gun also made it through the house fire. Um, like I said, and this is that's the new Savage. It's not a Savage ninety three. It's a B uh, seventeen, whatever. But it's just like the this ninety three. Just different mags, different safety. Different bolt, a little bit different bolt. Both good guns. 1938. All right, so we're going to go get this target, and I'm done shooting for the day. I made videos earlier. Probably I'm, uh, I might splice them into this one, but I shot that that one earlier. And I was getting pretty decent groups out of it, the 1938. I was getting pretty decent groups out of it. You know, six, seven inch spread at 100, 100 yards. Ain't, I mean, yeah, not a tack driver. It's not a scope gun. I want to take it hunting. I know within 100 yards, and most of my shots up here in the Northeast in New York, most of my shots, I've had one shot over, I think it was about 150 yards. Um, that's the longest shot I've ever had to take on a deer. Most of mine are within 40, sometimes 50 yards, 60 yards, almost in bow range, actually. Um, I've actually taken more, most of my deer with crossbow. Uh, but... Uh, I, I think I could take that gun. The, the logistics of getting it up into a tree stand or into a blind, it's really long, as you know. Mosins are quite long. That might be a pain in the butt. All right, so, yeah, everything was to the right with that gun. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, look at that, though. That's not bad. Five-shot group, 84-year-old rifle, iron sights. One, two, three, four, five. So the one flyer, but other than that, man, dude, I tell you, I'm impressed for myself, not for you. <laughs> hey, you know, that's, let's see, it's as big as my thumb, an um, inch and a half group. Take the flyer out, makes it a three inch group, but uh, well, from there to there, actually. Uh, not, not too shabby, I would say. 84 year old rifle, not too bad, man, not too bad. I will take that all day. If I can get, and I have hunting ammo for it too. That's 185 grand full metal jacket, boat tail. Um, pretty accurate. Uh, the Tula, I get the same, pretty much the same when I shoot the Tula, 147 grain. Um, I think they shoot a little bit higher though. Like my group would probably be up about here instead of here. But uh, I had the, uh, best I could tell, I had the uh, sight right here. That front peep right about, well, the front peep makes about this big. It makes it this covers this right here so i had that in there so i mean three four inches to the right i'm not too unhappy with that that's not a bad group it's an 84 year old weapon 
you know, the lands and grooves. I wish I could show them. I wish they would show up in the camera. I've tried before. I can't get them. I mean, they're, 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 are, they're sharp and they're really good and they're, they're big. You could tell that the, it's had not a lot of uh, use through it. When I bought that gun a bunch of years ago and I've shot it, and like I said, until I changed the peep sight, it, it was okay, but it always had good tight groups and still getting those good tight groups. Um, really good lands and grooves. That gun was not probably used. Um, so, all right, I'm done shooting for the day. I got to go home, edit some videos.